بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم مائی نیم از علی حیدر اینڈ آئی ایم فرام الیکٹرانکس انجینئرنگ ڈپارٹمنٹ یو ایٹی ٹیکسلا اینڈ دا آرٹیکل وچ آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو پرزینٹ ٹو ڈے از الیکٹرو کارڈیو گرام بیس سسٹم فار دا کریکٹرائزیشن آف ڈائبٹیز دا کنٹینٹس وچ آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکرائب آر موٹیویشن انٹروڈکشن لٹریچر ویو میتھڈالوجی ریزلٹس اینڈ ڈسکشن اینڈ دا لاسٹ ون از کنکلوژن دا فرسٹ ون از موٹیویشن اکارڈنگ ٹو دا آئی ڈی ایف اسٹیٹسٹکس آئی ڈی ایف از بیسیکلی انٹرنیشنل ڈائبٹک فیڈریشن اکارڈنگ ٹو ایٹ دا پریزنٹلی ایوری سیون سیکنڈ سم ون از ایسٹیمیٹیڈ ٹو ڈائی فرام ڈائبٹیز اور اٹس کمپلیکیشنس وی کین انڈرسٹینڈ دا سویئرنیس آف دس ڈیزیز فرام دا آئی ڈی ایف اسٹیٹسٹکس اف وی سی دا ٹاپ ٹین کازز آف ڈیتھ اوور آل ورلڈ وائڈ ڈائبٹیز ملیٹس کم ٹو دا نمبر ایٹ دا ون پوائنٹ فائیو ملین پیپل ڈائڈ ایچ ایئر فرام دا ڈائبٹیز موو فار دا انٹروڈکشن Uh, basically, diabetes is a frequent endocrine disorder that is characterized by the rising of sugar level in the blood. The most frequent illness due to diabetes includes retinopathy, neuropathy, nephropathy, and cardiomyopathy. Uh, basically, diabetes is marked as a leading health issue which causes the death overall worldwide. Diabetes mellitus is an illness in which body capacity to retort to insulin is decreased. The current techniques uh, accessible for the recognition of diabetes are invasive approaches, but the regular skin breaking can cause blood stream and discomfort due to blunt on the fingers. The major contribution of this research includes the non-invasive method for the diagnosis of diabetes. Therefore, the research focuses on the ident- identification of diabetes through ECG signal. Basically, there are two types of diabetes. type 1 and type 2 uh, people with type 1 diabetes don't produce insulin uh, you can think of it as not having a key it occurred when body is failed to produce enough insulin for body need its symptoms are increase in hunger dry mouth and fatigue uh, comes to the type 2 uh, people with type 2 diabetes mostly don't respond to the insulin as, as well as they should and later in the disease often don't make enough insulin uh, it occurred when the body failed to respond to the insulin f- formed in the body accurately and its symptoms are blood vision slow healing for sores and frequent urination uh, both types of diabetes can lead to chronically high blood sugar levels now comes to the literature review uh, there are many techniques for uh, diagnosis of diabetes Uh, uh some people uh, uses different techniques that are described here number one is diabetes detection through deep learning architecture uh, it uses svm classifier for that and it got 95.7 percent accuracy second one is diabetes detection by ppg signal uh, ppg is photoplethysmogram is an optically obtained plethysmogram that can be used to detect blood sugar Uh, that can be used to detect blood volumes changes in the microvascular bed of tissues. Uh, it got, uh, uh, <coughs> it uses card uh, and RF classifiers for that and got uh, 64% accuracy. Uh, RF is random forest and uh, card is classification and regression tree. The third one is utilize, it utilizes the uh, HRV. HRV is basically heart rate variability. Uh, it detect diabetes by a heart rate variability the classifiers that it used are svm knn and pnn uh, sport vector machine knn neighbor and propagation neural network and it got the 79.93% accuracy the fourth one is a non invasive approach it uh, it detect diabetes by color characterization of facial junks Uh, it used classified knn and got 94.28% accuracy and the last one is diabetes detection by pulse oximeter uh, it got uh, 64% accuracy and it used machine learning algorithm for the recognition of diabetes now moves to the methodology in basically there are four steps that we use to detect diabetes in our study The first one is data acquisition the second one is preprocessing the third one is feature extraction and the last one is classification uh, the first moves to the first word, uh, first one uh, data acquisition basically we use biopack kit to record ecg signals of normal and diabetic patients uh, 
uh, we use SS2 and lead for the di diabetes detection for the, uh, uh, collecting the data from both normal and uh, diabetic patients. Uh, basically, uh, the process is uh, SS2 and leads are placed on the electrodes and we uh, place th those electrodes on uh, both legs and the, on the right hand of uh, the subject. And then we import data uh, in our PC. Uh, in our study, we uh, used total 20 subjects, 10 diabetic subjects and 10 normal subjects, which include both male and female subjects. And the ECG is recorded for each subject of duration of 30 minutes. Uh, then, we, uh, the device, then we converted into the samples. Uh, this, this is a raw signal of uh, nor both normal and diabetic patients. Uh, normal subjects and diabetic subjects and then after sampling, it's uh, also shown here. Now move toward the pre-processing technique. Uh, the data obtained from the numerous subjects is still raw. Uh, it's required to be free from uh, different artifacts before further pre-processing. So the technique we used for pre-processing is empirical mode decomposition. Uh, the empirical mode decomposition technique is an algorithm for the investigation of multi-component signals that work by splitting the signal into the frequency and amplitude modulated signal components called IMF. IMF is intrinsic mode function. Basically, IMFs are high frequency signals which occupy noise in them and while lower IMFs are low frequency signals called also called residue. Uh, we calculate IMF by uh, first we calculate local XGMRs, we then detect upper and lower envelopes and then we calculate mean. So this is the IMF signal as we can show the higher IMFs, IMF1, IMF2, IMF3, 4, they contain high uh, they contain high frequency signal, they contain artifacts, they contain noise that uh, that we that is not used in our study. Uh, we use uh, the lower IMFs for uh, uh, for our uh, diabetes detection. So this is a signal after pre-processing. As we have shown the signal before pre-processing, the raw signal. Uh, now uh, we can see the, the signal after pre-processing, and uh, then uh, and also some sampling of them is also shown. Uh, basically, ECG signal contain uh, the peaks, PQRS peaks. Uh, then we can detect the uh, uh, some variation in both normal and diabetes patients through uh, through which we can detect diabetes. It is uh, easily from the diabetic patient. Now move to the feature extraction. For a signal classification system to exhibit better performance, feature extraction plays a critical role. Considering this fact, we made extensive experimentation to figure out a powerful feature vector and we come up with this feature set of nine features. Uh, these feature set contain uh, the FN skewness, FN keratosis, FN peak to peak energy, log energy, mean frequency, RSSQ, mean absolute uh, deviation, correlation dimension, approximate entropy. Uh, so we can explain some of uh, some of these features. Like first one is skewness. Skewness is basically a symmetry in a statistical distribution in which curve appears distorted or skewed, uh, either to the left or to the right. Uh, similarly, the second one kurtosis, uh, it is basically it is a measure of the sharpness of probability distribution to a real valued random variable. Uh, and the peak to peak. Peak to peak is basically a di difference between the maximum positive and maximum negative amplitudes of a waveform. Uh, and the uh, other one is mean frequency. Mean frequency of a spectrum is calculated as the sum of the product of spectrum, uh, spectrogram intensity and the frequency and then divided by the total sum of spectrogram intensity. Now move to the uh, other step of methodology, last step, classification. And the classifier on, on which we got the higher accuracy was SVM cubic. It is a type of SVM classifier. SVM cubic is basically supervised machine learning algorithm. Uh, it linearly classifies the known separable data by hyperplane as shown in the figure. Uh, first, it finds a hyperplane, then that divides a data set. It can lead to a higher performance in practical applications. And uh, it currently considered as one of the most efficient family of algorithm in machine learning. 
most probable results and discussion uh, so this is a graphical representation of different classifiers that we used to get higher accuracy but uh, we got higher accuracy on svm cubic classifier uh, these are the different classifiers that uh, can be used to uh, uh, that can be used to get higher accuracy but we got higher accuracy on svm cubic classifier uh, and this is a graphical representation of SVM classifiers. There are uh, some types of SVM classifiers and the accuracy that we, higher accuracy that we got on SVM cubic classifier was 96.8%. Uh, so we use SVM cubic classifier. And this is the confirmed matrix uh, as we can uh, as we can see that only 4% is unpredicted. 96% data is predicted of uh, both diabetes and 2% uh, data of normal is unpredicted so uh, it's the maximum accuracy i think it is 96.8% accuracy that we got uh, in this study so this is the comparative analysis of our technique with other techniques that uh, others used for their study like someone used uh, different uh, classifiers and got different accuracy but in all these if we see we got higher accuracy from all above we got 96.8 percent accuracy uh, and we uh, see uh, we detect these by using uh, electrocardiogram uh, ecg signals for the characterization of diabetes uh, there are uh, these people use different uh, classifiers and different techniques for that but uh, we uh, got the higher accuracy from all of the above so finally move towards the conclusion uh, our study presents an innovative method, method for the classification and the detection of diabetes mellitus using electrocardiogram, which is a known in, in which is an innovative procedure for the detection and classification of diabetes. The technique we used in our paper uh, is more efficient and also gives more accurate results. The accuracy obtained in this study can also be improved if the number of subjects are increased. Uh, so basically we can see that uh, it gives accurate results to us and uh, it's no danger to human health because this is a non-invasive technique uh, for the de uh, detection without any skin cutting uh, and these are the references that uh, we you know, from from where we get some help uh, for our study thank you